Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so this is a 13 inch 2012 MacBook. This one's completely dead. All right, so if I plug the charger in, it's drawing pretty much no power. It's like one milliamp, maybe. Might do four milliamps, maybe. Sometimes on the chart on the power supply I'm using here, so it's not really doing anything. And see, so there's no green light, nothing happening. So let's check for PP3 V2, which is here. Nothing on that inductor, so that's not there. Okay, let's look for something else. Okay, so let's sort of probe around this chip just here. Now this is the U7200. This is one of the five volt, three volt voltage regulators, buck converter circuit. And it's got a few supplies there, so I just need to go around those and see if they're present. So I'm going to look for PP5VS5 first, which should be on there. There's nothing there. Oh, let's put my volts. So there's something trying to happen. Cutting drawing point one amp still. So let's jump around a little bit and it's just not working very well. So nothing obvious there. But it's not there anyway, we know that. Okay, next thing is uh BP 3V3S5. I'm going to search for a couple of resistors, which are just over here. No, no 3 volts supply either. That's all completely dead. Alright. So let's check its power supply, see if it's actually getting any power going to it at all. So, on pin 16, which is going to connect to this device here, that capacitor right there. 1.3 volts, well that's definitely not right. Okay, so it's, it's supply going to that chip is no good, so it's further back than that. Okay, let's look at the first supply rail, which should be the main one. I was trying to sort of start in the middle a little bit to give us a direction to go in. Anyway, so PP bus G3 hot is what we're looking for, and that will be on a fuse just here. 0.9, oh, yeah, plug it back in again. Yeah, 0.9 volts is what we've got, so 1.5 volts there, yes, yeah, definitely got some kind of issue. Was it unplugged when I checked this last thing? No, it's okay. So 1.6 volts. Both sides of that fuse. Something's going on. Why is the voltage there low? Does it have a short? Doesn't show as a short. It's not that direction. Just check these for short as well. No. No. Nah. Okay. We'll keep looking. In fact, I'm going to do something. I'm going to unplug some stuff. Because sometimes, something that's plugged into the board can be what causes the problem. Battery's still plugged in, so I'll plug that as well. Unplug the sensor. I'll leave some of this other stuff plugged in. Alright, then we'll try again. See if it's changed. No. Nah. Slightly higher, but not much. Still got some kind of problem. Right. We've got some by the keyboard. And a backlight. And a lump like this as well. No, it's still low, so... Okay. It's unplugged screen connector. Although it's unlikely to be this. This is not going to get into that state, so it's not likely to be a problem. But we can do this by elimination, just to be sure. No, nah, still no difference. As expected. Okay, so it's just dead. Which means it might be that chip there. But I'm going to look back and see what we can find. The last couple of bits of video, I had it on diode test mode instead of voltage mode to start again. So we've got power plugged in here, and I've now unplugged all these other parts. Let's just see if there's anything here. 1.5 volts, so it's no different with everything else unplugged. 
So that comes from the ISL 6259, which is right there. So it could be a problem with that. Um, we'll have to have a look and see what's going on there. So I have to poke around that circuitry there and just see what the check the supplies into that chip and that sort of stuff and check for any shorts on its outputs and we'll see if we find anything there. Alright, so the first thing we check for is for uh, DC in. Sorry about the framing on this thing, but it's the lens I need for this right now. Um, so DC in is going to be uh, over here somewhere. <laughs> Big resistor. Big resistor. Big capacitor. Um, right there. 18 volts. So we have DC power going to that chip. Okay, that's the start. Right, so what I want to check now is resistance across the current sense line. Now, what it has is a DC line going in and it measures the current through that line um, and checks for that being a problem. Okay, so if that's not, if it's got a fault there, it will maybe not turn on. So I've got it set to resistance now. So if I measure across C7020, it should be effectively across that line. So I should measure 20 odd ohms. There we go. 20 ohms. So the current sense circuitry is okay. It's looking a little bit dirty around here though. It may have some liquid damage. I can see some like darkness here. That's the first part I've seen on this ball. So maybe I'll just give that a clean up. See if that changes anything. It might do. Yeah, it's the first little bit of dirt I've seen on this ball. It's right there. So, right, we'll just heat this up. Give it a bit of a ball off with the flux. Give it a clean and see if it changes anything. I'm not going to try and reflow anything, I'm just going to heat up enough to actually melt the flux, get it activated. I should probably turn this thing on and get it a bit closer. Get it a bit smelly. Give that a clean and see if it's improved at all. It may or may not. We really don't know. The fact there's power going to the chip means it's likely to be a chip itself, but yeah, let's we'll see how we go. You find that these pads do actually leave some fibers behind. I've been using these for a little while now, and um, since I started doing the MacBook stuff, because it's much finer detail, much finer um, circuitry, I've been noticing I'm, I'm finding fibres afterwards, so still no green light, still no real current draw, so nothing's actually changed the looks of it, still one volt there, yeah, so, it's... so I might have to replace that chip. Okay, so there's another current sense line here, which is I need to check, which is uh, C7050. Well, it's obviously across the line, so I can use that as a convenient test point. And let's go find out where it is. It's directly by the chip. In this case, in this view, it's above the chip, which is that one there. Three point four ohms. What's it supposed to be? About 1.01 and 2.2. Plus my test lead resistance, which is not perfect. About 0.6 ohms or so. All right, so that's, that's zeroed out now. Now we'll check it again. See, it's just small resistance. We need a bit more careful on it. There's some pads here. I don't like to use the pads. I like to go straight to the parts. So that's 2.8. So it's supposed to be 2.2. So that's really fraction off but hardly anything. I don't think that's really going to be a problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll ignore that for now. Carry on looking. Okay, the next thing is I've got to measure the AC in side. Let's take it off. I keep forgetting to take it off. That is vertical resistors here. If I measure these two here, there and there, I should be measuring about 39.4 or something. 39.7. Yeah, okay. Close. So that looks all right. Well, I should check for voltage at that point too, shouldn't I? So let's do that. Just because the circuit looks okay doesn't mean it works. So 
again measure the same places 13.5 0 that's correct and I think the output is that pad there about 3 volts I think 4.3 there we go so that divider is working ok so the ACN is sending to the chip let's keep going okay, another supply line we can check for is PP5V1 charger VDD which is, should be on pin 19 and it's also got like a reference on pin 20 as well so there's a couple of horizontal parts I just need to check on one of those it's next to the one I looked at before 5 volts ok so that's it right so all of the power supplies appear to be there that I can see so far unless I'm missing something ok there's also an enable I think let's have a look there's an AC OK, pin 14, Let's see if that's on. Over here. That's low. That's low. So yeah. Saying so AC OK is not OK. Should have something coming out of it, and we're not. I'm thinking it's a bad chip. There's no shorts I could find. The supplies are there. So I think I need to replace the chip. So I'm set up, ready to go. You can see on the screen here, there's the chip. All these little through hole wires here, they're looking a bit brown. They seem to be like that across the entire board. So I don't know if there's actually an issue there with these being a problem or not. Um, there's a passive just there, which is a little bit corroded. I mean, and it's a couple of dodgy wires. I mean, that's one here. Look how brown that is when I scrape it. Um, that's pretty bad too, you know. So some things like this just need touching up. Are they bad? I don't know, but potentially. Don't know. I just don't trust them. You anyway, know, I'm going to try replacing the chip because. So far, everything checks out apart from there being nothing coming out. There's power going to it, it's just not controlling it. So we'll take that off and um, drop a new one. I've got some brand new ones here in this packet. Well, there may be new ones, might be pulled, who knows. I've also got some here which I tried before from another machine. So I'm not actually sure if this is bad or not. I think it was this one. No, that's something else. That's a different chip. I don't know what I've done with it, I guess I lost it. Anyway, I'll take this off, put another one on. Uh, pin 1 is this bottom corner here, that's pin 1. So this is 6259 there. So, um, I have to make sure I get the orientation correct, obviously. Let's try and get this thing off. I'm going to need more heat because my soldering station isn't very good. I really need to get a better one. It's just got a hole in it. Oh no, it's just well, now it's loose. I'll have to look at that. No, it just doesn't look like it's got a hole in it. It's making me suspicious now that I might have to take the chip off. Is that a hole? Well, these resistors here look bad too. Maybe I'll replace these resistors first and then I'll come back and look at the chip. Maybe I'll do that. Let's clean all this up first. Just in case it isn't the chip.
So I'm just not trusting these things. Place of those. Well, this one start fluxing. Bone of all here, hopefully, we've got the pants on this one. There's enough to find them otherwise. Yep, those are on there, one, and they look good, so it's fine. I'll swap those parts around. Trusting those wires. So, there's one there which doesn't look quite like it's sold very well. It's there. It could be a problem. Lux on, good. Let's try and get in the habit of looking at the monitor rather than at the ball I'm actually working on. I could be completely wasting my time. I really don't know. But we'll find out. Get this part off, put them back on. See which one's got to put on there. Nice one on. are off, we have to get that resistor there off, that capacitor that resistor. Right, so okay. I think we've got an robots. <laughs> no. Wrong place. Move it. Go. 
right. Some flux on here, we fly all make sure it's all nice. We'll give it another go. See if it's changed anything. I still might have to change the ship yet. Set it to cool down a bit before I stick some cleaner on it. Where have I put it? I've lost it. Oh, it is. Put it away. Why do I put it away? Yeah. power on it and see what happens. Is it any good? Still no green light. I think it's actually getting hotter, not cooler. That chip may be bad. Okay, well, I've just got more questions because now this chip's getting hot. Before it didn't get hot, so something's changed. Have I cocked something up? Entirely possibly, but I don't know. Let's try and do some voltage measurements very quickly whilst it's trying to power up. Four volts, hey, that's the difference. Something's definitely changed. Okay. Well, as you can see, I've uh, lifted the, the the IC off the board I since it's off I'm going to replace it all these uh, through hole wires are just really ugly I'm just not happy with them at all so anyway it's just uh, try and put some fresh solder and stuff on there and try and leave enough solder on these pads that will stick on Too much on the centre one. I'll get some of that off. There we go, it's looking good. Save for a mount. You can see it still looks pretty ugly around those bloody wires, but. To get some more of these, I've, been, I've used a few so far. There we go. I think that's a line now. I should try and push it down. that clean up. You know, with a bit of luck this will change something. Maybe even power it up. Alignment's not too bad, it's a fraction off. It's all looking good. Right, I reckon we try pairing it up again. See what happens. 
well it's not getting warm so something's changed check it on set of volts 0.9 volts well, that's not any better is it it's worse nothing that side 0.9 9 18 volts there 18 volts there one eight there 5.1 there no get point nine which still isn't right that's a new chip it's in the right way around is it just because of all these bloody wires? Well, let's just do some basic shop checks then. Check some capacitors and stuff like that. See if anything shows up. Uh, uh, uh. Just in case I find a supply which is shorted, that's looking a bit low. It can be normal though around the CPU. Can get um, stuff in the CPU area looking like it's short, but it's just not. Oh, those ones there, one point. Maybe those are. The low, but the nice are short. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. Something bad just there. Right there. Think that's a problem. Maybe. Could be completely unrelated, of course. The problem is that solder has got really horrible flux in it. It works well, but it doesn't come back off after. <laughs> you see this big lump there now. It's all flux there still. Anyway, I don't know. This is certainly going to be a pain, isn't it? Well, we'll keep working on it. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, pulled the board out of the MacBook now. I thought I'd better just check the other side of the board in case there's any problems on there. Since I haven't actually checked that side yet. It looks like someone has cleaned it, because a lot of the dust is actually not here. It's all, it looked really good. Even the the radiator here, it all looked pretty dust free. Right, it's all pretty dust free. There's a little bit on there, but not much. So it's been clean. But, where the speaker goes over here, it hasn't been clean, it's all very dusty still around there. Um, actually, I'll, I'll go and clean this dust off first, then I'll inspect the ball. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Alright, that's the dust off. Let's have a look. That's quite a big distance there because it makes it easier, but I suppose I could get a bit close in some places. It's a bit of a um, green um, pad this there. Oh, you can see that green right there. That's not very good. Let's clean that up. So, I might just do things as I, as I find them rather than relying on coming back to them. I should have my stretcher on, shouldn't I? Another one over there. So yeah, it's had a little bit of liquid on this area. Parts and soils look okay. It must have been very light. I 
It's a little bit dodgy. Come on, get the draft flux to run down here. Focuses on one. Okay, here we go. Get out the focus square, be a bit better. Right. Quite a tight heat sink up as well. Oh, there's a few dodgy ones around here. So there's another one there. Just down there looks bad actually. Right there. Yeah. I just don't trust any of these, when you see this brownness there, it's like, well, is it okay or not? I just don't trust them. So I just think this thing hasn't been uh, sold a mask properly. So this just seems to be loads of these little bits which just look wrong. There's loads and loads of those little brown ones. I don't, know, I don't trust this computer. The other thing is, you've got those vials look like that, but then you've got lots of components which look absolutely fine. Like, there's no issue there. This is uh, this mess here is from me working on the board. That sort of flux has come through the vials, so you can ignore most of that. Really, it's just dirt. Um, so that's what I hope it is anyway. Again, there's loads of those wires which you just don't like the look of. It's just so suspicious about all that. But as far as liquid damage goes, it doesn't really seem to be anything. So I did actually a little, a little test which I haven't recorded. I should probably tell you about it. The um, a way of determining whether the issue with the PP bus G3 hot not working, what's that? Is to check for. Um, so if you've got no voltage on GP, PP bus G3 hot or incorrect voltage at that, at that point, you can plug a battery in because battery will provide the power instead of the buck converter. I've tried that and I've got power there. So it's not like a problem having with that no voltage there or incorrect voltage is due to some fault on the output of that buck converter circuit. The uh, PP bus G3 hot actually seems to be okay in itself. So I believe it's just a problem with the buck converter. So I'm gonna have to check every single component around that device and just check it. Because so I've replaced the device already. I'll check all that, every single component. Verify that we're okay. So it still looks fine. Oh, what's that one? I say as I find one, which looks a little bit dodgy. What's the story there? No legs on that side, I don't think. Oh. No, I can't feel anything there. I think there's any legs there. There's something there. Those ones there. Is that in the wrong place? Is that not actually not in the middle like it's supposed to be? I think that's offset. There's nothing else really around there which looks corroded, it's just a bit of dirt, so the side looks okay. Probably nothing. Just take the C sink off. Taste is weird. So there's a bit of dust around there, we'll get that out.
Hmm. See it. Green. That's not a good sign. Not there. Green flux. That's probably just flux through from the other side of the ball, is it? Might be looking outside the ball. Hmm. That might be some liquid. Don't want to do it too much, don't want to desolder the IC, that'd be bad. Don't want to take the CPU off or, or GPU, not that Whatever the hell that is. Just want to activate the flux. Might be able to get my iron tip down there, get that green one. Let's give it a go. That green tip disappeared now, might be alright. Parts look okay, so I don't know, maybe it's just nothing. They're just looking right there. Yeah. That one there is looking a little bit funny. No, it's coming back. That's right. Soldering, okay. Must have been a little bit of time It's just the lighting. I'll tip it up a little bit, it looks okay. I mean, I think I've gone over this whole board now, so I don't really see a problem. Um, yeah, apart from the vires. So I'll clean all this up properly and I'll put the heatsink back on again and do some more testing again afterwards. Right, so I've been trying some experiments with this. What I've actually done is I've hooked up a lead, ignore it right now, it's bent over, right? Um, I've powered this manually from my power supply and I've removed the MOSFET on that buck converter, which one just pulls it positive, right? To try and eliminate any potential problems and feed my own power supply into this and checking the current draw stuff like that. And it seems to be fine, doesn't like there's any shorts on the supply lines no real current draw, you can see it bouncing up and down which means there's a, there's a power circuit later on which is struggling to start up so I can track it down later obviously the first thing I'll do is get this supply working and so I took the MOSFET off, it's sitting right here I, I, I'm suspecting it's shorted, I'm not completely sure but then I'm getting the same reactions without that in them in place and I've, tra I've changed the um, ISL6259 again with the original one, put the original one back on again didn't change anything because what's happening is the MOSFET gate pin is sitting about 0.05 less than the rail itself which I'm thinking is a bit strange almost like there's a short somewhere there could be the main thing I want to do is take that that, um, that chip off and make sure it's okay but anyway but I found another problem whilst I was probing around trying to because I think well I've got power there now so why don't I have a green light and a charger it's still not green light, thinking well I've got 12.56 volts set there because that's what I was injecting then I should have power, I should have a green light on the charger, I should have something but the 3.42 volts rail was not there I thought well, okay let's look for that and that's this chip over here, U6990 or something, what is it? is that what it is? yeah, U6990 it's a um, 
PM6640 this year. I see I've got a bunch of brand new ones of these when I need to replace it. But I don't think that's the problem. Pin 4 and pin um, 7. I'll find the chip on here. Uh, there we go. Right. So pin 4 and pin 7 is a chip. Which are opposite pins of each other. They should be the same. They should be basically linked together, right? They're not. Now, pin 4 is the enable and pin 7 is the voltage in to that buck converter. I measured the voltage on pin 7, that was fine. Couldn't measure the voltage on pin 4, even though they're supposed to be linked together. There's nothing there. So, I've got this on test. Now, this is a bit dirty, it's a bit hard to see, but there's a. Um, I'll zoom a bit, you'll be able to see it slightly better. But there's a via right there, and there's the pin. I've obviously I've put some flux around here, but I took the, um, that MOSFET off. So there's the via, and there's the pin. So if I stick the probe on the pin, right, and then there's the opposite pin this side, which should be connected to it. There is nothing, there's no connection. Anywhere, right? So if I go from the via itself to this pin as well, nothing. So the via seems to be dead. I haven't tried going from the via to the actual pin there though. Let's try that. So look, anything there? Yeah. Okay. So it looks like the via through the board to here. Or maybe underneath it. I don't know where it's even going. Might go underneath. I don't know, but um, I've got voltage there though, so I'm not quite sure the story is. But um, there's no connection there between four and seven. But if I get my one of my donor boards here, this one's intact in this area, so it's not been touched. Okay. So there's a cleaner view. You can see a little bit, a lot better there. So you can see there's a. Um, so there's that vial I was talking about there, there's that pin, and there's the other pin. Turn it up slightly, you can see. Just there, and it's linked to these chips here. Right, so I've got voltage here, around there. For some reason it doesn't go straight across the board like that, which is a bit weird. I don't know why I just didn't do that, but it goes through a vial. I don't know why I've done that. Anyway, um, but yeah, no connection. So if I look at this one, just take the probes on the pins. It works fine. Of course, I stick it on that cap. That's you know part of the same circuitry, right? Vias is um, not doing anything because that's got a um, solder mask on it, like it's supposed to have. Oh, must decent what's going to Strangely enough, this one here, this <laughs> it's funny. This is a donor board, right? You can see it's all stripped out. Well, no, there's no bits on it. All gone, right? I'm going to plug a charger into this and get a green light. It's funny. Anyway. <laughs> it's closer to working than this one is. Right. So I need to look at this circuitry just here once I get it back on camera. And um, tidy this up. What I'm going to do, on the back of the board here there's, a, there's an inductor directly opposite this chip. Which is part of the buck converter circuit. It's, I think it's L6995. I'm going to double check that. i flip the board over and double check that. And that is directly over the top of those vias. So what I'm thinking it might do is go through the board to that inductor and then come back again. So I'm just going to try probing onto that inductor, I think, and see what we get. It's a bit tricky to get both sides at once, though. Side. might not be the right place. I need to double check this. But there's something going on right here with that vial and everything, so I'm going to take that coil off. And it says vials all through here. I need to try and find out which ones they are. Is that them there? One, two, three, four, two nearby. Uh, so 
so the outer one leans inwards leans inwards so as they go together I think so I think that's them there so I think that's the wire right there that right there is the wire which goes for the ball so I'm going to take that coil off and have a look underneath it to take a lot of heat is a bit fragile. Okay, got it off. Let's have a look, see what's under the ball. So yeah, the pattern matches. So it goes up to that resistor just there, the looks of it. Yeah, it goes up to that resistor. So let's check continuity there. This one here should be through the ball to that pin. So let's try that. We'll get on camera. See you somewhere. So. No, there's nothing there. So we sold them all there. So there's the wire, there's the pin. So I'm not quite sure why those two pins aren't going together. Maybe the wire is underneath that chip. Let's take that chip off. I don't really want to, but I think I'm going to have to. Just need to be careful about these RAM slots. Come on, two last off, one pin left. Alright, so there's also it's got the good ground pad underneath the point on here. Instead. It's also to be ground pad on there, so that's why it doesn't actually go across like that. So there must be an internal link inside the board or something. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So another wire's working, it's going through the ball. But for some reason it's not connecting to the other side. So I need to check the wire that goes downwards. It might not be that wire that's coming up. It might be the wire of this side that goes down. I'm guessing anyway. I could be wrong. See, it must be an internal wire because I can't see anything on the board here. I mean, is it... Well, my guess is that it's... Uh, that wire there going to there. Does that makes sense? We've got a cluster of three just there. There's a cluster of three. So a cluster of three, one that's down and to the left. I believe that's the correct one. Yeah, that's right. So that via there and that one there should be linked together inside that board there. Those should be going together. There is nothing. So let's check this wire here. Pull that wire there. Yeah, nothing there. Checking angles to make sure it lines up. Yep, that's definitely the right wire. That wire is not working. So that's the problem. That wire is dead. Definitely dead there. I'm not doing anything here either. I'm in trouble reading that one. So, I need to kind of link those together somehow. This is going to be interesting. Alright, so I've got the uh, 
IC and the MOSFET back on again now. Now I need to link that those two uh, pads together on that IC because obviously the, there's no continuity between there. The internal layer must be faulty, those fires must be bad. And there's something I was worried about as far as the whole ball. So I'm not even sure if I can risk it as ball. It might be no good at all. The whole ball might be faulty. So I've definitely got nothing there. So I'm going to have to link from probably that capacitor there, solder onto that end of that capacitor, and onto that pin. I may be that I might be able to scrape that trace up and um, solder onto that. And I've got continuity through the ball on this side, so I hope you run a wire from there to there will work. Um, otherwise I'm going to have to wire right around the board, which I don't want to do. So I've got this wire here, I'm just going to grab a strand of that. I mean a strand of that should be you know, strands look massive on a microscope, but here it's not that big. Anyway, so I'll grab a strand of that and we'll um, link that across here to there. Sounds like a fan, doesn't it? Scrape up that uh, trace just there and try and get it to attach to the whole area, not just that pin. So, you're lucky we get that. Something going on there. Let's try and get this wire. So this wire you see is massively thick compared to what we've got around it. It's probably okay. Let's just shape it a little bit better. Soldier just there, I think it'd be good. I never thought I'd ever uh, have to worry about soldering an individual strand of wire. Anyway, it's a little bit messy, but you know, it is what it is. promising. Let's do a comparison and one side of the ball to the other and see if it works. So I should have from this resistor there to this capacitor here and I don't. Working. 
think we've still got a problem here. So, pin to pin's alright. It's supposed to pass through the ball today as well. <clears throat> we'll find it again. Alright, so I managed to get that connection to work. I went around the other side of the ball, took the core back off again, and touched up the through hole via with the um, soldering iron, a bit of flux, stuff like that. It got it working. So I've now got connectivity between those pins and through the other side, which is to that resistor. She goes back to pin 4 over here. Now, I powered up just now, and that wire was getting warm, which means that internal trace is probably burnt out because I think this IC here might actually be bad. So I'm going to change that IC and we'll come back. Might as well video it, I suppose. I've already moved the wire out of the way and got it started warm up. Again, I've got to be careful of the RAM slot, mustn't get that hot. Gotta get this thing out as quickly as I can. Some of it's molten, but this one pin still doesn't. There we go. Right. I'm gonna replace that a chip. Okay, here's a brand new 6640. Put this in. We'll see what it does with this one. Uh, drive me nuts. Flux. Fish solder. Where's the logo? Flux. Let's get the thing on. So, no, it's right, 50 milliamps. So that's not bad. Residual heat, nothing's getting hotter. Right, progress. Let's just do some voltage movements and see what we're getting. Two point seven volts from the ISL sixty five nine. Okay, and I should be getting three point four two somewhere. Where was that? I forgot where it's supposed to be. Um, we'll find that again. Oh, that's right. I'm going to call it when I saw. Should be, but I'm not, and that's probably because this isn't working. You're yeah, only getting four volts here. So I'm back to the original problem with this circuitry here. So I'm going to inject my voltage there again and see if that uh, changes anything. Even with the MOSFET in there, hopefully, it doesn't cause any problem. Half an amp, should be plenty. And There, still 
Okay, I've had enough for today. Right, so I've been poking around trying to figure out why this PP3 or 2 isn't working. Now, what I've realised is that there's a capacitor on the upper there, which looks like it might be shorted. So that's the cap there, which uh, if I try and get it on the thing here so you can see it, that'd make more sense, wouldn't it? So there we go. So there's, um, so U6900, is it? I can't remember now. Yeah, U6990, which is 3.4 volt, 3.42 volt buck regulator, which I'm playing around with, which had that to open internal trace in, in, the, in one of the board layers, which is, I'll put that jumper wire on, or it's kind of messy. And um, this cap here is on the output of that regulator. Now, watch this. Three ohms. There's a short. It's probably that capacitor. It could be something else. I'm going to take that cap off and we'll um, see if that clears it. There you go. Get some more heat. I'll try and do it quickly so it doesn't spit the heat through the board. So we'll just take the cap off and we'll see if the, the short goes away. Trying to be careful not to uh, damage the RAM slots, as I've said a few times now. The shulk has gone. Yep, that cap is bad. Winner! Okay, so yes, yeah, so it's been a bit of a nightmare, this buddy thing, with the shorts and God knows what else going on. Bad caps, bad wires, bad ICs. I've not been enjoying myself on this particular board. Get the other one off. I don't know why I'm so cramped on this desk. It's like, it seems like everything I need is right here though. So, oh, I keep getting caught on this bloody stand as well. It's a bit annoying. No, uh, you saw it. A bit noisy, I'm afraid, but no. Right. Working on this bit of the board so much it's actually covering flux and definitely have to use ultrasonic on this one to get the thing working. Definitely gonna have to. Anyway. Well that should now be the 3.42 volt rail working. So let's take this off. And just use the charge input only. Still 0.4. Ah, uh, what's wrong now? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
this is being so frustrating. Okay. Okay. Let's just probe around and see what we can find. Again, make sure things there. 18 volts there. 4 volts, or 0.4 volts there. I should be getting the output on that point. C6994. That's a bypass, like a feedback on pin 9. So pin 9 should also have that voltage on it. Don't know where I focus. Yep, so pin 9's got the feedback on it. What's going on with this thing? Could it be that this one's blown because of the short that was on that output? Oh, okay, no, I'll just replace the chip again for the third time. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Just to be sure it's not that. Okay. Okay, here we go again. Deja vu going on here. Uh, orientation, I think ST was to the right, wasn't it? Where's the markings? Come on, where's the markings? I need to see which way around it goes before I take it off. Because I don't under. Yep, ST goes to the right. All right. So here we go again. Don't refocus, I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Right. Oh, I need to get that wire back on. Because I doubt that tracks miraculously fixed itself. Okay, let's give it another go. Oh, this is driving me nuts, this thing. <laughs> it really hasn't been co very cooperative. Uh. Go on, let's see what we get when I stick that on there. Still 0.47. Alright, so that chip there which I took out is probably still fine. So I shall um, put that back in the packet. So the chip's probably still fine. Same output. So what else is wrong? 
this chick for any other caps being bad, shall we? Some games, that's all right. 181k is all right. A couple of k going up, that's all right. This is supplies, should be fine. Hmm. Okay, what was that showing as a short? In one direction. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Well, I'm running out of ideas here. Could it be another bad fire? Entirely possible. So I need to um, look at that and see what's going on. It can't be that hard. <laughs> right, I'll come back after I've had a bit of a think of this. I've checked all the capacitors have got grounds like this place too. So these all these various cats which have got ground connections, they all do go to ground. You know, in case it's the other end which is disconnected. I don't know what that chip is, I should find out what it is. Since it's connected to it. Right, so I've went back and just sort of backtracked a little bit. And I've been putting new devices on for that IC for the 3.42 volt supply. Put brand new devices on twice and it hasn't made any difference. Replaced all the parts around it, checked all the connections, I cannot afford anything. So what I've done is I've backtracked and put back on one of the original devices, I'm not sure which one it was, I think it might be one of the parts board. And um, I'll put that back on this board and I'll turn the supply on. I was getting a green light just now. Here we go, green light. So it's got a green light, still no fan spin in it. Right, but I've got a 3.42 volt rail back, which it seems to be, um, yeah. 147 I'm getting there, it's close enough. I might have 46 outside. Well I still don't have this um, this rail here. I'm getting 4.5 volts now, so that's an improvement. So I might actually re-look really at this as well and change that chip back to one of the original ones and see if I can get that back. Because it looks like it's trying to run. Um, so I'm just suspecting that maybe these parts I'm getting from China, which are supposed to be new parts, maybe they're fake. Because they both didn't work, which is a bit concerning. So, might explain some of the other problems we're having. So, I'm going to take that chip back there, there back off again, and see if that restores that rail. Um, unless there's a short on that rail, but I don't think there is. It's just it's trying to run, but it's not getting warm or anything, so I really don't know what's going on there. Um, check those MOSFETs actually, see if they're getting warm. Put the fan on in case the fan tried to spin, but it's not. Yeah, there's no warmth through at all. So it's not like it's a short or anything. I'm suspicious that that part I've tried to use as well is also not working. So we'll go back to that in a second. Okay, so after replacing the uh, 6529 again with one of the original parts, I was then getting 18 volts coming out. It's like, well, that's not good. Um, on a 12 volt line, the 12 volt 56 line. So luckily I was only checking it really quickly, so I turned the power back down again straight away. So I shouldn't have done any damage, fingers crossed. Anyway, what that what we've got is two MOSFETs right here. Right? One's positive, one's negative MOSFET. The fact it's going full means it's, the negative wouldn't be pulling it down. So I um, replaced that negative MOSFET. Right? Replace that one again. I think I think I replaced it before, swapped out another one, and I swapped this one back in again now. So the one that's in here now is actually the original one that was in it. One of the things I swapped when I was trying various things. Anyway, so I've done that. And so the question really now is what happens? Power it up. I'm confident. We have fan spin. And we have a green light. The board is alive. Have I finally fixed the damn thing? I hope so. So I'm just going to check for any particularly hot spots. Um, the board is still a bit warm from when I was working on it. There's no RAM in it obviously so it's probably going to be confused by that. But It's getting very hot over here. 
and say the fan's ramping up. So I might need to replace the um, thermal compound. I haven't done that yet. Obviously I did it when I took it all apart, but I've put it through the ultrasonic since then. So it's a little bit different now. Let's just um, check that again. So I'm going to turn where the heat's coming from. That is getting very hot. That's getting very hot. That's concerning. So, it's not over yet. We've had fan spin, but it's still got problems. So after a long time, I finally got back to doing this MacBook here, and as you can see, I'm doing testing right now. So I've actually got a thing to boot up and run. I've replaced the trackpad, replaced the trackpad flex. Keyboard's okay, surprisingly. The screen was loose, I've tightened up those hinges, I should have recorded that actually, but you have to take the, the screen off, slide this panel off to the right, and then you can pull it forward a little bit. And then you, you've got screws on the back of the panel for this, and the hinges so you can tighten those up. Uh, put a new hard drive flex in, and I'm running a just an old hard drive, and it's actually an original Apple hard drive right now for the testing. But I'll change this probably to an SSD. And so far, it hasn't failed in anything, which is good. So I'm going to let the test run until it finishes, testing everything. And hopefully it actually passes everything. But it seems to be working okay now. Done a lot of work on this one. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, testing is finished, and it passed. So, I think this MacBook might be fixed. Only thing now is to just actually use it and see if it does anything weird, like slow down randomly or anything like that. But uh, it's looking pretty promising. I think that's a winner. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, get the thing for the creator posts, and uh, give us a thumbs up. And share it. Make sure you share the video. And tell your friends as well. You know, post on social media, Facebook, whatever. Someone's got a MacBook which has had liquid damage, maybe they'll be interested. Who knows? So, just share it around, you know. Reddit's also good. I've got my own Reddit thing too, if you want to put it on there. Get you later. Nothing. No power there. Okay.